All right, Math 98, let's do section 7.3, where we are going to uh, factor some quadratics, uh, factor some polynomials that have a leading coefficient other than one. So let's, again, think about some structure here. So if I had something that was like, like this, I, I would multiply some stuff out, right? Like 3y times 2y is 6y squared. And then 3y times 7 is uh, 21y. Notice I multiplied both of these by that 3y. Plus, 5 times 2y is 10y. And then 5 times 7 is 35. So notice I multiplied, again, both of these by that 5. In other words, um, like these both have a 3y in them, and these both have a 5 in them. Hopefully that pushes you back to that, uh, the way that we could factor something if it has four pieces to it. But um, I'm not done because I can actually combine those. So 6y squared plus 31y plus 35. So that would be this multiplied out. Notice where that 5 came from. Five times, uh, 35, 5 times 7. That first term comes from 3y times 2y. This middle term comes from a combination, 5 times 2, 3. So with that in mind, there's a couple of tools we have. Um, I'm going to talk about each of them. So first off, we have greatest common factor, right? Like these both have a 6 in them. So I could factor out a 6, and there's some factoring done. These ones, I have this leading coefficient of 1. So things that multiply to 24, add to negative 10. This, uh, after you do some guessing, working on this, b minus 6, no, b minus 12, b plus 2. And on this one, I've got the four pieces, right? So I can factor by grouping here. Factor out an m here, plus n. Factor out a 5 from these two. And then factor that m plus n out. Of Quick review of all the techniques that we've done so far. So let's look at something that's a little more complicated. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do what it, what's, I'm just going to call the trial and error method. Well, your book calls it that, the trial and error method. And so here's what I know. I know that this is probably going to be 3x times x, right? Like the first term is probably going to come from a 3x times x, and the last term is probably going to come from a 2 times 1. They add to something positive. So that makes a lot of sense to me. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just go like, I'm going to put 3x here. I'm going to put x here. And I know that the 2 and the 1 are either are going to have to go here and here. And I'm just going to put them in spots and see what happens. So if I'm going to put the 2 here and the 1 here, and I know that this will give me the first term 3x squared and the last term of 2. Like those are taken care of. I just got to make sure I get a 5 in the middle. And notice that that middle term comes from this multiplication plus this multiplication. Like 3x plus 2 is 6x. Uh, x plus 1 is x. That does not add to 5x. That adds to 7x. So with that in mind, I'll just switch the 2 and the 1 and see what happens. Right? That still gives me a 2 at the end. This is a 2x. This is a 3x. That adds to 5x. Yeah, so I'm there. So see how I can build the first term, build the second term, and then kind of juggle things around to, to try and get the middle term. I'll do the same sort of thinking on this next one. Uh, this is probably going to be a 2y and a y. This is probably going to be a 1 and a 3. So 2y, y, and then the 3 and the 1. You know, it's either going to be a 3 here and a 1 here, or a 3 here and a 1 here. Um, and if I try this, it gives me 6y plus 1y is 7y. Nope. But if I put it here and here, 3y plus 2y is 5y. Yep, it gives it to me. So that guess and check, that trial and error method, um, it works, you know, and sometimes it's a real efficient way to do it. There's another method that we can use. It's called the AC method. And it comes from this. The, the general way to write these are AX squared 
plus bx plus c. You might remember that from an algebra class that you've taken before, where a is the term that goes with x squared, c is the, the ones term, and b is the, the, the number that goes with just x. So here's how the ac method works. I've got 6x squared plus 7x plus 2. First thing we do is we multiply a and c together. So 6 times 2 is 12. It's really 12x squared. But um, So now what we want is things that multiply to this, but still add to that middle term. So we want things that multiply to ac, but add to the middle. So let's see, multiply to 12, uh, 4 and 3. And that adds to 7. And notice it's x, so I'm going to say 4x and 3x. Again, that multiplies to ac, to a times c, and it adds to that middle term 7. And then now what we do is we break that 7 up into those pieces. So 7x, we're going to break it into 4x and 3x. And it doesn't really matter which, which one I put out front. It's going to work out no matter what way you do. Notice I could have done that, or I could have written it this way as well. I'm going to show it both ways just to show that it works both. So looking at these, and now I'm going to factor by grouping. Uh, 2x goes into both of those. That means me a 3x plus 2. And interestingly, 3x and 2x, nothing goes into those except 1. So I'll just write it like 1 times 3x plus 2. And look what happened. I can take a 3x plus 2 out. And that's factored. And notice, you don't have to do it both ways, but if I had written it this way, a 3x comes out of both of these. A 2 comes out of each of these. Whoops, sorry, I missed the 2x here, because that's a 6x. A 2 comes out of both of these. And then these, since these both have a 2x plus 1, I can factor it out. And I get the same thing, just in a different order. So this AC method, I think it's super clever. And it comes out of that first multiplication that I did, right, when I multiplied this out. And I said, notice these both have a 3y in them, and these both have a 5 in them. It's that, that's why that works. More examples uh, like this. Okay, first one, 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. I'm going to use the AC method for this. So AC is that times that. So that's 30, negative 30x 30 squared. So I need things that multiply to that, but add to 13, negative 13. And I think 15 and 2, negative 15x and 2x. Yeah, that multiplies to negative 30, adds to negative 13. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3x squared, I'm going to break that middle term, that negative 13x, into these two pieces. Negative 15x plus 2x minus 10. Then I'm going to factor by grouping. So these both have a 3x in them. These both have a 2 in them. Great, worked out great. These both have a negative uh, x minus 5 in them. So I'm going to... Uh, Factor out that x minus 5, and it's factored. Okay, same thing with this one. I'm going to use that AC method. Uh, 3w squared times 5 is 15w squared. So I think it needs things that multiply to that and add to that, and I think it's 5 and 3. 5w and 3w. Now it makes 8, so I'm going to break this, this up with those. So I'm going to say 3w squared uh, plus 5w plus 3w plus 5. And again, you can write them in whichever order you want. Uh, from these first two, I can tell there's a w. That's all I can take out of that. Factor by grouping, 3w plus 5. Nothing here, so I'm just going to say a 1. I've got that 3w plus 5 I can factor out. Done deal. And uh, if you are not confident if you're right or not, multiply this out and you'll get that back. Okay, I look at this one. Oh my gosh, such big numbers. But I notice 
they're all actually uh, wow they're all divisible by 40. i could factor i could do a greatest common factor thing on this first i'm going to take a 40 out of all of these so 160 divided by 40 is 4 so 4x four squared uh 320 divided by 40 oh that's negative 2 68 and then 120 divided by 4 is 3 so that 40 is already out there that's good so i'm just going to worry about factoring what's in here so my ac method uh 4x times 3 is 12x squared so i want things that multiply to that but add to negative 8 so they both have to be negative. How about negative 6x and negative 2x? Yeah. So I've still got this 40 out here, just sitting there. 4x squared. I'm going to break that negative 8x up into these. So negative 6x, negative 2x. Notice that is my negative 8x right there. Uh, plus 3. So 40 is still going to sit here. Uh, these two, uh, 2x I could take out of there. And then I notice I have this x minus 3. That should be uh, 2x minus 3, shouldn't it? I have a 2x minus 3, but I have a negative 2x plus 3. So I'm going to take a negative 1 out of these ones. That will switch the signs here, 2x minus 3. And now those match. So now I can factor that out. So I'm going to have 40, which I you know took out at the start, greatest common factor, times 2x minus 3. I just factored that out, leaving me 2x minus 1. And there that is fully factored. Ah, what a treat. That AC method is fantastic, uh, in my opinion. Hey, send me any questions that you have, post them in the forums. Um, let me know how you're doing.